This is question number two, long answer questions for part D. Please give a like and a subscribe. Let's keep the channel growing. Thank you. HJAC is an accountancy firm with a head office and several regional offices. Staff at the regional offices communicate with the head office via video calls over the internet. The quality of the video call depends on the bandwidth and latency of the broadband connection. Describe the terms bandwidth and latency. Bandwidth is the amount of data that can be transferred or transmitted at any one time from one point to another in a period of time measured in megabits per second. So if I go on to a speed test, this would be my bandwidth currently. So 120-ish megabits per second. Please do keep in mind, this might randomly come up as well. Megabits and megabytes are totally different. Megabits are smaller, megabytes are typically larger. So um, how do we work out megabytes from megabits? Simply divide by eight. So let's just say, let's make it easy. This was 120. So if I do 120 divided by eight, this is how many megabytes I'm getting. Latency is the delay, the time delay or the lag experience before a component responds to an instruction measured in milliseconds typically. So this is normally what you see as your ping when you're playing your games online or even when you run that speed test again, you would see ping somewhere. So that's what that is. Latency is the lag that you experience. Now, every single thing has latency. It doesn't matter if you have a fiber optic connection that moves at the speed of light, it will still have latency. It's just that we might not be able to measure the latency accurately enough because the equipment we have some of it, a lot of it, 99.999% of it possibly, doesn't accurately measure stuff going at the speed of light. Next, we have explained two factors that can affect bandwidth and latency. So some of the things that can affect bandwidth are the amount of contention. So that's simply the number of users you have connected at any one time. If you have more users connected, it's automatically going to try and split the amount of bandwidth or the amount of speed, let's say, each person gets equally. So that's going to make your speed less. So, ver so imagine, uh, I, what was mine? mine? Mine was 120 megabits per second just now. So imagine me and one other person, myself and one other person. That's going to split it two ways. So I might get 60, the other person might get 60. But then we, if we split it three ways, it goes down more. If we split it four ways, it goes down more until it gets to a number where everything is moving relatively slow. At peak time, such as early morning, when many users are logging on to check emails, for example, in your school, you might notice peak time uh, would probably be just after lunchtime or in the mornings first when everyone is logging in at the same time. So for latency, network devices may have a queue. So users resend packets due to collision may not be able to respond to all the connection requests. So if a packet drops or does an email doesn't get sent or they bump into each other because you're using a bus topology, then you, you have to resend it. The amount of data being transmitted on the network, more users simultaneously transmitting data will be sharing the connection. So again, because you're sharing the connection, imagine I'm downloading something and I'm uploading something at the same time, as well as all the other five or six people connected to the same, um, the same network. Everyone's going to move a bit slower. And for latency... Network devices may have to resend packets due to collisions. Receiving packets, uh, uh, sorry, receiving devices may take longer to process extra requests. Type of connection being used. Example, a wired connection is generally faster, generally has a higher bandwidth than a wireless connection. Very true again. For latency, some connection types require transmissions. Example, Wi-Fi needs to be converted to some cable connection and vice versa. Some cable connection needs to then be converted to Wi-Fi. Distance from the nearest uh, telecommunication exchange, the network link, the bandwidth reduces over distance, gets weaker. So if I live in London and the closest transmission tower to me is in Essex or Kent, that doesn't sound like a great deal. However, if I lived in London and just down the street from me, I have the closest transmission tower to me down the street. That's going to be much better for speeds. So it says distance from the nearest tele telecommunication exchange, network link, bandwidth reduces over distance, gets weaker. Latency, the signal takes longer to cover a greater distance and must travel at least as far as the nearest network. Quite simply put, the further you are from something, the longer it's going to take to get there. That's it. Even if it's moving at the speed of light, it still takes longer. 
And because it takes longer, the latency is always going to be more. It is important to keep sensitive data secure during transmission between head office and regional offices. HTTPS is one method of securing data during transmission. Explain two ways HTTPS keeps data secure during transmission. It uses Transport Layer Security Protocol, TLS. You can also say SSL, which is Secure Socket Layer, which improves extra layers of protection uh, or encryption. So again, you can say TLS or you, you can say SSL. SSL is probably what most of you know of because that's what the book says a lot. TLS is a newer technology. So you could replace this and say SSL, which provides extra layers of protection and encryption. When a browser connects to a site, it checks that the site's TLS or SSL certificate is valid. If the site fails to check, the browser displays a warning. I showed you guys this in a previous video, I believe, alerting the user that the site is not secure. When a browser connects to the site, it asks for a public key. It uses a public key to produce a session, uh, a session or a new key for the connection. So every time you go into a website, a new session is created between your PC and that website or website server. The browser or client negotiates keys with the server, creating a shared symmetric key for the connection. So I have a key, you have a key, we share the key between us so that we can keep that connection open. That's how it typically works. It says do not, do not accept explanation about encryption and how it works. You have to explain how HTTPS is used.